Bluetooth quit. Bluetooth. Uh, what up, everyone? DJ Anubis here. And DJ Neko. With the Metal Tech Radio oh. Podcast with special guests. They, or who is they? So I already missing one guy. He just took off. Of me, but, uh, he needs snacks. We got Jeff. His uh, Bluetooth here. speaker just died. All right. So so we, ju- we just lost our audio feed. All we have right now, because it, this wouldn't be, like, we can't make this normal. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, we relied on technology. So this is one of one of the things we we preach against is the reliance on technology. <laughs> now is, is Mercury retrograde right now? Because that could be a problem. Yeah, it's very. You know, it's right, working though. Go. Turn it back up. It's working. It's almost like magic. We're good to go. Okay. All right, there you go. Are you good? You're you doing your intro. Yes. Yeah, start all of that over. All right. Yeah. Part two. <laughs> yeah, we're good. This, is, this is called chaos. This is organized exactly. chaos. Live. This is exactly how it goes. I'm going to have one of these. So I got okay. uh, Jeff Plant here. You play bass, I believe, right? That's correct. And then uh, we've got David O'Hearn. Uh, let's go around. Just introduce yourselves, what you do. Um, so you uh, introduced Jeff Plant, who is actually on my uh, left side. Uh yeah. Plays bass. He's amazing. Uh, I'm Dave O'Hearn. Uh, I play guitar um, yep. and write some lyrics. Yep. And do and some vocals. Some and do some vocals. Yeah. yeah. Do some some of that low, some of the heavier vocals, the low yeah. growl stuff. Uh, uh, that's then, it. Yeah, and I guess that's about acoustic about guitars. About, yeah, right? could, yeah. yeah. That's what it should. Be. Just, just, I'm, I'm all. I'm, yeah. I'm just palling around. <laughs> you're palling around. And then, do you want to wait and go last? Because you're. Sure. Yeah. I'm also. Uh, Play guitar, acoustic guitar, like star, blah blah blah. Uh, Jackson, uh, Chris Jackson, and then uh, now you're gonna get an extensive uh, kind of. Uh, yeah, I do everything else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I've, I've uh, you know, they come record at my house, and uh, and I write the bulk of the songs, and uh, and you know, I, I play. I don't really. I'm not as as good on uh, instruments as these gentlemen are, uh, but. Uh, I uh, mainly do uh, programming, synthesizers, that sort of that sort of stuff, and and write write all the songs. So, uh, I'll give you a little backstory on. Yeah, him. he's not going to talk about him, so we're going to have to tell yeah, the story. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, okay, I've, I've, known, already, I've, I've known already, for, I've already leaned back. You see, I'm already leaned back into this comfortable conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've known him for 30 years, and we originally started. Uh, he was a drummer. I yeah. mean, that's Grew up playing. That's what he playing started out as. Drums back in the nineties, and he's not going to say it, but he yeah. was actually really good. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, over the years, he kind of stopped doing that, got into electronic music and stuff like that. And we still lived in Houston at the time. And then, uh, that's when the Nagwall thing started. Yeah, which we had was an industrial project uh, many, many years ago called Nagwall that we uh, we put out a few small albums and played some shows and stuff like that but uh but it was the basic it was same thing primitive. yeah it's, but yeah a very primitive. primitive version of what it is now yeah but I, it was just he and i, I was learning how to do and it yeah i mean it sounded horrible but you know uh, <laughs> uh we were doing it on very poor equipment yeah. and, and things like that all well, these guys I, you know, helped yeah. out with Nagwall as I, well yeah, i love i loved it yeah i got to i got to play a show yeah, it, Jeff, was, Jeff it was awesome stuff. Yep. Yeah, that was once we got that was after we lived up here and we made it to about 2008 mm-hmm. and we're doing Nagwell and then we played some live shows, which, you know, thankfully, yeah, uh, turn out great. Thank, but thankfully, <laughs> because just kind of like this, the they stuff and everything else, it's so confusing sometimes to the audience. I don't think they knew the mistakes that we yeah. were making because it was so obscure. <laughs> What was going on to begin with? A lot of them after the show came up, we were like, "That was fucking awesome." Yeah, and we're both like, "What the fuck, dude? That was a train wreck," yeah. you know. But <laughs> but they didn't know because yeah. they were just it was so fucking weird to them that yeah. it didn't really matter. What you know? I mean, I guess the mistakes that we made yeah. didn't seem to you know land on them the way that they landed on us. It was definitely yeah. Uh, yeah. The live performances were were. Interesting for sure. Yeah, interesting yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, I never did. I never did a live Nagwall performance. I didn't know. Yeah, uh, yeah, what was that? Did, power tools and power tools in Houston. Uh, numbers. Numbers. Oh, numbers. 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 No, who actually did power tools? Uh, power tools was even. That was yeah, that was, that was fun. Yeah, that was a crazy thing yeah. because. Numbers is a huge fucking place. I mean, a, I, we it's saw a big industrial, well, that big, but it's a nice, it's shit. a cool underground industrial. We bar. saw, we saw a lot of bands there over the years that we oh, lived yeah. there. Nine Inch Nails played there, Marilyn Manson, all kinds of huge acts played at this place, and all of a sudden we're up on this fucking yeah, stage, fun. 
with that project yeah. going, yeah. what the fuck, dude? We didn't. First we time didn't we, like, this? Is, no rehearsals. Yeah. Like, no, yeah. Nothing, like, no nothing. <laughs> I mean, we all kind of learned on our own. You learned, learned on your, your own. It's get like, up there. And it was, you got it? I'm like, yeah, yeah kind of. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, what's the we had to like, like yeah, I had it was a, fun. I mean, there was so much chaos going on that it, it was crazy. Yeah, yeah I mean, we had I mean, like an acoustic could, guitar stand and like two of them. I thought. Right? Yeah, it was uh, it was wild. Yeah, we had another guitar player with us at the time. Uh, he was a <laughs> he was a really interesting fellow, but uh, oh, she, my Amber Amber alert. alert, missing children. No. Yeah. <laughs> Well, for those that are going to be watching this for the first time, oh, um, so read it out loud. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute, there she is, right there. Uh, for those that are checking in for the first time with this, uh, obviously Neko and I we did a deep dive with your first record, Unspeakable. Uh, but uh, last year you released a new one called Collective Psychosis, so we're going to dive into that a little bit soon. Awesome. Um, like I, well, like we were talking off screen, initially it was hard finding uh, information on you guys, but eventually we did some deep diving and research and managed to come up with you, and we contacted you, which was cool, and you guys were willing to do this. So we do appreciate you taking the time to sit down with us and uh, talk because I think you guys are amazing, straight up, no lies. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Absolutely. Clearly, a band like Cynic uh, has played an influence on you guys. Wow. Absolutely. But at times when I'm listening to your music, I get a little bit of um, almost like a classic rock vibe. So I'm wondering if bands like maybe like Styx or Camel or Yes or even Pink Floyd have played any kind of part in the influence of uh, they. Absolutely. For me, absolutely. I love prog rock. Uh, you know, Jeff Rotel, <laughs> Pink Floyd, King Crimson, you know. Uh, yes, obviously. Uh, you know, I grew, grew up listening to that, all that. Uh, well, Gen through my Gen teenage like Gentle Giant, the, yeah, yeah, that type of stuff was definitely. I mean, for me too. I think we all, we all. Uh, our Jeff, really I don't know. Pro. Yeah, Jeff, I'd say probably at some point, probably. Yeah. Right, Jeff. What? All, yeah, man. Pink Floyd was like my favorite band for most of my life. So <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> yeah. it's like impossible so not to. Oh yeah, yeah. David Gilmore is God. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we, we love, and I'm we not love just joking about we, that. We That's I'm, I'm being serious. People, <laughs> people have worshipped wrong for fucking centuries. They've had it wrong, and they they may, may or may not figure it out. But it's actually David Gilmore. <laughs> uh, Very nice. Yeah, we were we were uh, in the car yesterday, and we're listening to your album, and he was like, "Listen to this. It sounds it's so Floyd like influence." I was like, "Yeah, yeah thank you." Yeah. We definitely all love Pink Floyd. Yeah, David Gilmer's solo album, uh, on, yeah. an island, on an Island, fucking great, amazing. amazing. Like that's like a, it's a master, it's a masterwork. It's just yeah, yeah, really, a, really nice. It's a David one, Crosby, one, Brad Nash, yeah, on it. Yeah. One thing that stands out is uh, your album covers. Like they're really uh, vibrant and like very crazy looking. Like I really love it. Like it all, it does take me back a little bit to Focus from Cynic. So it's got that kind of yeah. like, going that's on great. here. Mm -hmm. Who's your uh, artist that does that? Uh, I use I find different artists. They're both album covers have two different artists. Uh, okay, they're both just really brilliant people. I found uh, I found some of their work and then contacted them and uh, you know and worked out uh, you know uh, my favorite piece from them and and uh, they let me use them and I'm really I'm really happy man. They're they're, they're some great you know I would love to work with either of them again. Uh, so I mean, they didn't commission the parts for us or anything. I just picked out my favorite pieces that they did. Basically, sent them an email and said, "Hey, yeah," and sent them my work. And we're not going to make any money on this. Yeah, exactly. Who the fuck we are? <laughs> <laughs> well, I love like this, but no money. <laughs> Pretty yeah. fucking cool thing is make a real cool album cover. Yeah. If you can look around this room, ninety percent of it is actually painted by this motherfucker here. I mean, yeah. he's yeah. really he could have done artwork for the album yeah. himself. Yeah. Yeah, I, I told him he could have done it, but artwork, yeah. I have his art is... hanging in my house. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, oh really? Yeah, it's like a, it's like a psychedelic museum in here. It's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, and that's actually museum. part of like that part of the recording process for me because I get to come here. Yeah. And and it's kind of hard to tell from there, but yeah, I got yeah. A lot, I mean, a lot it's of crazy shit. Hanging super around colorful, the really bright. Lots of uh, yeah. you know, lots of uh, uh, shapes and 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 <laughs> sacred <laughs> geometry and stuff like that yeah yeah which is really fucking cool so it puts you in a good state of mind and then i like doing artsy artsy stuff yeah it's sort of and then it just sort of does itself the and contact then, high that happens after you yeah there's a contact too. buzz that happens in here at all <laughs> almost <times>. immediately yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, was this band supposed to be like uh 
a side project or is it uh, just actually a full fledged band, but you're just doing everything? Um, well, I've, I've this is mainly the only thing I do. I mean, I uh, all these other guys have many other musical projects and stuff. Uh, this is the thing that I focus on. Um, and you know, uh, well, I guess Jackson is focused on this with me for the most part. He didn't yeah. have any other projects either, but. I do shit on my own, but it's just fucking sitting on my computer. And then Jeff is is like the most, uh, you know, wanted studio bass player in in all of Texas. I mean, he's like really honestly respected by everybody I've ever met. Go back through and listen to like really for real in their shit. Go back through. He's played on so many things. It's ridiculous. He's he's an asshole. We hate him. But (laughs) join the club. (laughs) <laughs> but I mean, Calissa's credits. That's the father of yeah. my children yeah. you're talking right. to here. <laughs> Thank you for saying I'm the father. I appreciate that. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't. I didn't mean to upset you or your husband. Yeah, Jeff uh, is probably the most prolific because he puts out. I mean, he's he's worked with so many people. Yeah, he's that's that's pretty much all. If you go through and listen to the album and listen to the bass lines, <laughs> like those oh, fucking bass lines make. I would say most of the oh, people. Who, yeah, most well, of the people who turn off turn off your headphones, Jeff. Mentioned specifically. But yeah, like it's, yeah, it's mentioned amazing. to me too, and I'm like, nobody in their life has <laughs> ever said a bass player's good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, well, that Jeff. There he is. Yeah. Right there. I got Hi. Right there. That, that elderly gentleman right over there. <laughs> well, so you guys mentioned uh, sacred geometry, and I took like a little clip from the song, and we're gonna play it now for the people watching. Mm-hmm. Probably about 25 seconds, but it just shows how great it was. And of course it's the album opener to unspeakable. So here's a quick clip of the song, Sacred Geometry. I'm gonna grab a beer. Yeah, I said, yeah, you can definitely hear uh, Jeff's uh, bass going on in there. Yeah, so that was great too. but I mean, it's it's super, super integral. Oh, yeah. And it carries that song. Like, uh, otherwise, it would be, I don't know. It's like, it sounds yeah, like. I mean, I, I, I wrote it with a synth bass, and I would write the, the uh, most basic kind of that just follows the song. And I'd send it to Jeff, and he'd send back just magic that made yeah. that just takes the song <laughs> a whole other dimension. Well, all of a sudden, it's like you have like this this bed of music. It's like yeah. water, and then you know, Jeff uh, is like a lifeboat. It's like the boat is on the water. Like that's how I hear that in my head. Right? Wow! Well, yeah. While you were recording we're, we're, this, you all kind of worked together remotely to. Yes. Okay. Well, well, they all work well through me. Well, I would, here, here, here's here's how it is. It's a combination. Okay. It's a really fucking weird. Uh, uh, process because if you heard these songs in their original versions, I mean they're they're really stripped down. I have them all on my computer because he'd bring them over every week. I I take and put them on my computer, so I have every version of these albums going all the way back to when it was basically just some drums and yeah. maybe some synth Whatever stuff. I'll start with sometimes and we'll it, start with a piano. Or yeah, a guitar it starts or really, or, or he'll take an old an old rhythm, you know, that was written a long time ago, and he'll kind of put it in there, and, and it'll start turning into a song and you'll watch this happen week after week, you know, uh, you know, when he would come out to my house and, you know, it's, it's a fascinating process to watch. And it's like nothing that I've ever even heard of anybody else doing still to this day. Yeah, It always but, comes back different. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Every time. And then, you know, you come over it over and over. You hey, come you guys over. throw that one away. I got a new one. Yeah. Like, okay, well, let's do this. Just refine it. Refine yeah. It, it kind of it builds, it builds and it changes and stuff like that. And that's why, uh, Especially like on that song, it was it was it was weird because that the that the the acoustic guitar rhythm that's going on there that shit I wrote like in two thousand two I believe and wow. I always loved it and so that that particular yeah. rhythm and, well, and he wrote and, it in you his know, head but we didn't actually no, record I, it well I like, I wrote it on the guitar well yeah, yeah but I, I mean just sing it. we no. didn't record we didn't record it till <laughs> thirty years right. Right. thirty years guys can't yeah, yeah. agree with each oh, other on that <laughs> right. yeah, he's cheating on you no but one of the things that whenever you guys whenever you guys were listening to the album because you guys actually picked up on that callback thing. That yeah. was done with that rhythm, you know, yeah. with the reprise and yeah, the middle. That, that melody comes and then, back. Yeah, and used yeah. again, which that's another thing that happened. Sit in the living room 
going over it. Hey, what about doing a callback thing, you know, which is a Pink Floyd type thing, you know, other bands have done it, obviously, and comedians yeah. do it. So uh, uh, yeah. that was a cool thing. And then, you know, of course, it turns into, well, you know, it'll be better than a callback. And a double callback, bitch. Yeah. So that's <laughs> and, and, and it wasn't that simple to do because you know that was still there was still a lot to be done yeah. on the album at that point because uh, you know. And another thing you guys brought up when you were listening to it that that made us very happy was noticing kind of the flow of the whole thing because that wasn't an accident. I mean, we went over and over and over how the album would go and how song to song would would feel and sound. You know, so I mean, it, none of it was accidental when it came to that. So the fact that you guys noticed that was really fucking awesome. That you noticed the the callback thing that was happening because that's something you know I've not heard anybody really talk about it. So I don't know oh, how wow. many people actually noticed it. You know, so I don't. Yeah. If I don't hear the feedback, I don't know that anybody ever picked up on it. So it's like, well, it's cool for us, but we don't know if it was cool for anybody else. But that was nice to hear that you guys picked up on it, yeah. and then also the song lineup. You know, because that was important. Yeah. We, we, we well, out, out of curiosity, from a personal standpoint, because like um, I'm just curious with Jeff first. Uh, a guy like Robert Trujillo, who I've always liked as a bassist, he actually has a guy that introduced me probably about five or six years ago named Jocko. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering who your influences are as a bassist. Like, uh, do you, are you aware of that particular artist, uh, musician? Jocko? Yes. Yeah, he's he's one of the most famous uh, bass players of all time. Like, I think, I actually, I play in a group with a guy named Mario Cruz, who was Jocko's sax player. Oh, wow. Um, when he was alive in New York, and we do a lot of Jocko tunes in Mario's band, because he lives here now in, in the DFW area. Um, so, yeah, I definitely do. I, Jocko's a huge influence for sure. Um, uh, I think my biggest influences. Oof, there's a there's a lot, but bass. Well, I mean, on a lot of different instruments, because I don't just play bass, but like on specifically on bass, I would say um, Gary Willis, Elaine Caron. You're not gonna know any of these guys, but I'll just say their names. Uh, Gary Willis, Elaine Caron, Otiel Burbridge. Otiel Burbridge, you might know. He's he plays with the Almond Brothers, and he's but he, he's a huge influence. Um, and then. Um, yeah, I'll just leave it there. And John, what, what about what about Nikki Six? How about him? He's that one's one. so big, I couldn't even list it. It's just like a bug <laughs> the other so far. He uses a backing track because he's too it's good. A, That's what he bucket. does. That's That's what yeah. how, about, how about you, David? Who's uh, who's your influences? Well, it's funny you bring up Cynic because that's like a super important album in my entire like uh, focus. I'm talking about is the most probably the yeah. most important album in. In my guitar playing life, mm -hmm. I, if, if, I just saw they're coming here like next week or yeah, something. Yeah, I know. I got a little boner. All right, go ahead. I'm a little tiny boner right now. The atheist. The last time I saw, him, the last time I saw him was, uh, was in Houston, uh, and that was for that was for that focus tour. And they, uh, I don't even remember who they came with. Uh, what year was that? I don't even give a shit. Uh, Ninety three. God, like 93, dude. I don't even give a shit who that came with. But that's pretty cool too, but I don't I don't even care. Anyway, so Cynic, big, huge. Uh, and then you get into things like, for me anyways, uh, it, stuff like Bungle, uh, and then that leads me to like Secret Chiefs and things like that, and uh, other musicians that aren't necessarily guitar people, uh, like uh, Sleepy Time Gorilla Museum uh, yeah. is a like turned out to be we all amazing, love we all love them amazing if influence. you guys never heard yeah Sleepy if you haven't heard Sleepy Museum. Time Gorilla Museum I'll have to check it out no really. we make a lot of their own yeah, don't eat, don't eat, you have to watch a video doing, I don't even one of a kind. gotta go to a show I, one of a kind I don't even know if they're doing shows I don't know uh, yeah. well, they're, well they're, they're getting back together like uh, they're, they're like this year they just just came out with all these announcements that they're actually getting back yeah. together so I'm a, ter I'm a terrible excited. super fan not knowing that I think so. I just yeah. saw today on Facebook yeah. the the yeah. chick violin players was yeah. doing Carla cool Kilstead Carla yeah, yeah. Okay. She, played, yeah. She, she played yeah. on uh, California for yeah. Mr. Bungle actually yeah so anyway yeah. It's, it's, and her it's solo kind of, stuff incredible yeah, yeah. Her solo yeah. Stuff. Um, and Fawn Fable uh, she does Fawn Fable Fawn Fable and there's there's a whole bunch of other stuff like a Florida death metal in the uh in the 90s like super huge for me yeah. and then jazz yep. players too and like fusion players like alan holtworth and uh frank Cambale and uh um just like everything Every, anything that had a guitar on it i want to hear it i don't I mean, give a shit to this day it's like i've got a room full of guitars and i'll just walk by it and just look at them and then just keep on walking and they're like <laughs> 
It's like, it's like good morning, my beauty. Yeah, hi. It's like, hey, how's it going, guys? It's, it's like looking at a wall full of challenges every single day. I'm like, yeah, this, hey, what's up? You're still here? I'm fucking hanging out. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much uh, every, yeah, we everything. We got some wide influences. Very wide. Very, all, all Stevie of Wonder. All of Stevie us, Wonder. Yeah. Like, hey, there you go. Steely Dan. Yeah, Steely Dan. Steely Dan. Steely Dan. Steely Dan. That's uh, a lot of, lot of important. So when you talk about like 70s bands and progressive bands and stuff like that, yeah, um, 70s prog is, is really like, it's pretty, it's pretty it. rad for, for me. Yeah, absolutely. And then other bands like uh, uh, Fate's Warning and old, and old Queensryche. Uh, <laughs> did you see here, my yeah. brother, uh, he's not here. Too bad. He needs to be here. Yeah. He's not feeling good. Um, but Andrew, uh, who does the all singer. the vocals, yeah, it's, it's gonna suck because I'm probably gonna end up talking for him, and he's gonna be <laughs> mad at what I say. He's gonna, he's gonna disagree with everything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, anyway, so I, I and I bring that up simply because he can he do. Should have been there. He man. can do Queen of the Reich so good. Oh. He's yeah. like he does the perfect Queen of the Reich. So yeah. if we ever was, if we ever get him online, and, you know, <laughs> when we played that when we played that Nagwall show back in Houston uh, in 2008. That because you know we had a bunch of people there that we knew down in Houston that came and showed up. So when we went down there after the, after it was over or whatever, that was because uh, a lot of them had never heard Andrew sing. You know, they, you know, yeah. you guys are based up here with the Shell and Death Squad yeah, and everything they else. Played. So they didn't really know anything about you guys down there. And like more than one person came up to me like, "Hey man, that guy sounds just like fucking Jeff Date." You know? <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I was like, he, "Yeah, dude. I mean, he, yeah, he definitely, he definitely he, has, he has that." Some pat Patton vibes. Yeah, but I hear more Mac, Mike Patton. But he can do Jeff Tate. Yeah, really sure. good Jeff Tate. And yeah, you should ask him about his wine yeah. spitting on people. <laughs> well, interestingly enough, on the new record, uh, like a song like "Shifting Tides," um, I noticed there were some female vocals. I know you guys are not new to adding added uh, musicians to each album. Uh, do you know who who all participate on the new album? I did the female vocal. Yeah, he sang. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I did not. No, he did not. <laughs> I wanted to hear that now. Let's hear it now. <laughs> Let's hear it. I can't do that right now. You know. <laughs> no, I wanted to. Uh, Where's my? Mother? I had to go in a small part of the house by myself because I couldn't even let him see me doing it. It was. It was <laughs> it's a personal thing. That came out wonderfully. Yeah. No, I uh, I just hired some studio vocalists because I wanted a. Uh, uh, some female vocals on there to, to play with. It's like another color, you know, and uh, that I don't have access to. I, and I, I don't was, really know anybody who, around here. There was a select. There was a selection process. Yeah, and so I, I, I would. Very I just found some, uh, some for hire musicians and sent them the songs Where and the lyrics from? and uh, very, various different places. I mean, they're they're uh, probably each song that has a female vocalist. It's a different one. Oh, wow. and they're yeah, uh, they're they're from other countries, uh, you know, Scandinavia and uh, Norway and stuff like that. Um, and so, yeah, I just wanted to to blend in some some. I, I really love female vocals. Their, their names are in the liner notes. Yeah, their sure. their names are in the, the everybody's liner notes everybody's CD. credited in uh, the. We don't yeah. even know. Yeah, like I don't even know. So I've, I'm, yeah, I can, <laughs> how, I can tell you awesome their names right now. I mean, honestly, <laughs> and, 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 uh, more than one of them say uh, that they're on labels that won't allow me to use their names. Yeah. So that they say they could uh, uh, not to print, to print their names and to only put like. Uh, the first name or, or a, a makeup name that they made up or something like that. We're very mysterious. But yeah, it's another aspect of, uh, you know, the mystery. Here. Yeah, again, that was part of the, the part of that weekly thing, him bringing stuff out there. He would, you know, yeah. sometimes he would have five different people maybe doing the exact same thing and, and right. he would interchange it. He'd bring it back over and I wouldn't even know sometimes. I'd be like, I, he'd be like, you know, I, I used the, the other girl on that one and I'm like, what the fuck, dude? That's, I mean, because he, yeah. He really does such an I mean, amazing job at, at you know, I mean, he does send it off to a guy to get it uh, professionally engineered and stuff like that in the end. But, I mean, he master, does a great master. Ma master like, whatever. You guys don't know how many yeah. hours. Like, I, I can't even tell time. you. Like, yeah. like, but, I mean, he does such a great job at it himself that really well, his finished product is, is good enough for you to listen to. But uh, I will say Brett does an amazing job at the end yeah, uh, master, breaking it down. It and because, look – we like a lot of weird shit. So to us, how it sounds at the end doesn't necessarily, I don't know how well that would be digested by regular 
people every day. You know, they might think this is way too chaotic or whatever. There's too much well, shit going on. Anyway. Well, right. But I mean, he at least he kind of mixes it together to where it, you know, yeah, it yeah. sounds he, he easier to take all, for yeah, people, yeah, you know, right. because he does have so many, there's so many things going on at any given time in the album. And like I say, he does such a great job that, uh, you know, when you, you get these different people because he started using Fiverr yeah, for that a, second album. And, he was mentioning you know, Steely Dan. I'm yeah. a huge Steely, Steely Dan fan, and they will just, yeah. you know, hire, uh, you know, hired guns to come in and just record uh, various solos or, or little parts of the song, and they'll hire five different people to do it, and then pick their best one. Yeah. And that's kind of what I do with everyone outside of the core group. All the core group. Is I, I, I use we get everything phone, they got. Yeah, we get a phone call. It's like, yeah, I mean, well, it's like, hey, what are you doing on Tuesday night? I'm yeah, like, I, I don't know. Let me I'll, see. I'll, see who has the kids. I, like on um, this last album, I hired a um, uh, slide guitar player, uh, like a pedal steel guitar player, because I don't know anybody who plays that. It's in there. Uh, I hired somebody, a Brazilian guy who did hand percussion on some of the songs. It turned out really cool. But honestly, you can't tell the difference between what he did and what I do without, you know, with, with just the computer <laughs> stuff. It's kind of. No one, I bet no one could probably tell the difference, but I can, I can tell the difference, and it sounds well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Really make like the finished product stand out. Yeah, but well, that's why when you get such a detailed and layered thing at the end that you guys listened to and that you were you were going over like that, you know, it's it. That's why it was interesting to hear somebody else's perspective yeah. because, like I said, we spent, you know, over a year, two years, something like that, just for yeah, that one years, album, and, and it was just you know, it was like a weekly thing. Going over every detail, every detail, every detail, every detail. So when it finally comes out, you know, it's again, there's things that are blended, there's things that were removed, there's things that were added. And, you know, it's it's such a weird thing that, you know, and you are kind of, you know, he's talked about this before when we're just sitting there talking about it, but you get tired of hearing it after a while. You're like, by the time it gets done, you don't I, care I stopped, about listening. To I stopped it, listening you know? to the album. Yeah. Once the albums are put out, I stopped li- listening to it. So, and we have a stack of <laughs> versions of CDs like this, yeah. like that's all. So we like saw your we Chris saw your would podcast. give us like he used to give us burn CDs. That's how we get a new version. Uh, that's how. So, that's a long time. Yeah, that's a long time. <laughs> that's, long time. Long time. that's when we first started. I get a new burn CD, and I'm like, it's yeah. like, ah, oh, man, I re- I redid it. Now, throw that old one away. <laughs> like well, it now goes in the the old CD stack, and I've had, they're all written. Uh, this is all post human stuff, and like oh yeah, we have another project stuff, called yeah, post human. But see, you there's save so all much, that. You save all that shit. Yeah, because it's going to be worth millions someday. Oh, yeah. There's you so know, much when, when I there's so much music. Music. <laughs> <laughs> You can't so say that. When you guys, uh, <laughs> when you wrote Unspeakable to Collective Psychosis, did you approach each album different thematically, or is it kind of just oh, the yeah. same vibe? Wildly different. Like I was. Um, like I was saying, I when, once I put out uh, Unspeakable, I stopped listening to it. I've listened. I was obsessed with it for years because I'm hearing it every day as I'm working on it. Once I put it out, it's a big sigh of relief. And since we were not playing live shows for it, I just stopped listening to it. Uh, the next time I heard it was when you guys just did this. Oh no, we listened to it once before this new album came out. Yeah, and I was kind of shocked at how different the new album was from the last album because mm-hmm. I heard it. In a couple of years, and um, and so we heard it once. I heard it once then, and then I the next time I heard it was when I watched your podcast like a, a week ago. Um, so I've only heard it twice since I put it out. So, but uh, the new album I was obsessed with and been working on for the last few years, and it is wildly different than the first one because I didn't listen to the first one again, and I'm just I just kind of go with the flow of whatever whatever I. I'm working on, you know, so the thing that he's not going to say, and I'll say it for him is that he, he advances so much farther hey, with each. Looks like we got Matt on, on board. Hey, hey, showed up. Speak of the devil. Here's Special some... guest. What's up, Matt? Matt? Hey, what's Matt? up guys? I just tried the link. Uh, I don't know what how much time I have to get my, my kid, but I thought I'd just pop in. Say hi. How's it going? <laughs> it's going good. That's the going drummer, going by the way. Yes. Hey, where are you? Are you in the hospital? What's going on? <laughs> I'm in my bed. I'm in my bed. You, know, you got you got hair, you got you got you got you got a uh, light behind your head that looks like a all right, there you go. You look great. Perfect. All right, perfect. All right. Yeah, there's Matt Thompson. I saw you yeah. earlier today. Yeah, you made the legend. The Matthew legend. Thompson. So ask, ask me the questions. There there he is. Matthew yeah. Are you guys at Christmas house? Oh, cool. Yeah, we're at Christmas house. That's yeah. where you should have come over here. I should have told you we didn't even talk about it. This yeah, Jeff, you Jeff turn Jeff your camera sideways you can take up the whole screen. Yeah. Oh, I see a book in back of you, like a CNN story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> hey Matt, if you turn if you turn your camera sideways, you'll take up the whole little block there, and it won't look so bizarre. Yeah, stop shooting. There you go. Uh, look you know, at you amateur. Now you're all right. professional. All right, so yeah, Matt, Matt plays uh, drums for King Diamond. Yeah, he's a uh, he, he's been there you touring go. with King Diamond for what? How long? On like um, it's been years? twenty-three years now. Yeah. Wow. yeah. That's your uh, that's your King Diamond lover right there. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. she's, a, she's a King Diamond fan, I guess. Yeah, yep. who, well, who I, is I love King Diamond too. He's but great. I, like he's like really. He's the great. crazy thing. I met him in two thousand two, right? And I never heard one King Diamond song. I didn't know who King Diamond was, and he's like. Because I I've always been into theater and theatrics. I used to do like musical theater and stuff when I was younger. And he's like, with all this theatrics that you're into, I can't believe you've never heard of King Diamond. So then he's like, here, check this out. And I think it was right around when Puppet Master yeah. came out, and I was just blown away. I almost wore my King Diamond mm. shirt today. <laughs> oh, should have. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> so let me yeah. let me. I do want to ask Matt one thing. So are you part of the Shaolin Death Squad? Yeah. Oh, so I saw, like, on Metal Archives, uh, you also apparently at one point was part of Agora. That's another great band that I think is underrated. Uh, yeah, technically I'm still a member of that band. Oh, cool. Now, did Those you play on both their albums that they released? No, no, they have three albums. I played on the last one. Sean Reinhardt is on the first two. That's right, that's right, that's right. Yeah, the last one was really good, too. I really enjoyed that record a lot. Thank you. There's no vocals on it. Yeah, it was a big change. I was expecting like uh, like either a new female so, uh, singer or the same one from the second record, but they went uh, no vocals. That was okay though. It was still very yeah. good. Oh, it's, it's not live. It's not live. Oh yeah, I guess he, he just had to. Uh, oh, sorry. We're we're talking. To, uh, Andrew was texting us, and he's too coffee to to come in. He can't. I, that's fine. Right. If he's not Phil, that's okay. Uh, thing on mute. Yeah. You can just stand there. Yes, well, one thing about uh, Unspeakable, and this is, I talked about it on the podcast we did for the album. Um, I didn't realize till about a few months ago that the song Down in the Park was a cover. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm a big Gary Newman fan, but I'm not as familiar with his earlier material with the, I think it's oh, the, yeah. the, the other group he was part of. But uh, who is the big Gary Newman fan? It wasn't, well, it, it didn't happen like that. It happened. We were sitting in my living room and he, I, I'm not going to say the one song that he wanted to use because he might use it later. Okay. Uh, I'm just trying so, to think of a cool, cool. But cover he wanted to it to be could... something that everybody knew. Yeah. And so and we were I going over that songs. Song was more popular Nobody was. knows that song. No one knows because, that because, song. Because, uh, Nobody well, knows that song. But I, but I told him. Yeah, you should have. You should have did Cars if you're going to yeah. tell a song everyone knows. <laughs> well, yeah. But I mean, the Foo Fighters did that song. Marilyn yeah, Manson love, did that and song. I love uh, uh, yeah, 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 so many people have done that song. I assumed. Yeah, was, I assumed everybody just fucking knew what it another, was. Another miscalculation on my part, just like. The, <laughs> but it came out. But it came out fucking came awesome. Out, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, awesome. It's, a, it, it's actually a very, very good cover. Like it was very. Yeah, uh, it's a unique version of you that made song. It, you made it your but, own. There's still a little bit of the the core part of it there, but it still made it your own. It was so beautifully done. I I thought the song was like Jingle Bells. Like okay, fucking everybody. He's yeah. done it over the course of history, so you know, jump in there and fucking yeah. do it. You know, it was it was easy enough for I him wanted to, to do. Find so. a popular song that people know, and then you know, put our style onto it. But um, which yeah, you did. Was, That's exactly what you did. Yeah, but just not as many it's people know about people, it. Yeah, I had to learn it. Yeah, we. I mean, it was I the first you, time I heard it. it was like you said you weren't going to spoil it. You just said Jingle Bells. That was the song we were going to. do. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, you have to do Frosty instead. Yeah. So well, maybe, maybe next album. We'll see. We're doing Christmas theme. Yeah, now, the Christmas. Now, album. do you guys do any kind of like I, I know because you kind of go from different places. Like Jeff, you're not always close by, and you're doing things over the internet. Do you try to tour with this project at all? <laughs> no, we have not played a live show, unfortunately, with this at all. We've not done that live show. I the Nagwall experience yeah, was, was fucking brutal. brutal. But I would <laughs> eventually, I'd maybe like to maybe you know I would. I'd like to leave that open. I'd like to maybe. It sounds like a great yeah. idea, but the the, the, the touring part. It, I, uh, it just gave I, me. I, it. I say, <laughs> if we were, if this project was ever going to tour, it would be real. It would be really interesting for me because, like, the way I usually record for this project, like Chris will give me uh, an idea of what he has for you know, like the bass line or what he was, and so I'll send him that i'll do exactly what he did and then he wants me to do like all these other ideas so i'll do like a whole track of just me slapping solo stuff over it and then i'll do like a whole track of just me soloing over the thing and so he he creates this 
and sometimes I'll do like a whole tapping track. Like I'll just tap all this stuff and right. he'll create this bass line out of all the tracks. You kind of mesh so, them together. Yes. So I would have to, it would be really hard for me to relearn my own stuff. That is, that's an interesting thing because that's the way that it was even as far back as Nagwal. It was, you yeah. would play something for him, then he would, he would kind of recycle it, kind of Dude, you know, the man reinvent it. Notes, single uh, right. notes. Right. He will break yeah, he'll even he'll break down your shit that You don't house. understand yeah. how many hours he's he's been possessed like by editing I'm, these things. I'm a lonely right. like, he, else like, to do. he was putting this together like a jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. Pieces that I would record usually came in almost completely done. I added like if they yeah. if they're the bed. I'm like throw pillows. Okay, so like, yeah. <laughs> a lot of the icing. Yeah, the Jackson icing, and I like, uh, do icing, a lot of the and work. then and then there's even better players that are yeah. on there. Like fucking like I bow to like the, the steel guitar player that's on there. Yeah, Jesus man. Like I mean, I, I listen to it every day. Like Chris says, oh, I I stop listening to it. I fucking yeah. listen to it at least once a week. No shit. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I hear something new, and it's like, hey, see you guys later. Later, oh, yeah, man. Appreciate it. Later. Um, so, um, I listen to it like once a week at least. Yeah. Uh, same with uh, um, same with the first one. I listen to that one all yeah. the time. Yeah. Uh, shit, shit, I'll find one of the old CDs and I'll pop that in. I'll be like, <laughs> "What version is this? No vocals yeah. or you know, yeah. There's, there's yeah." We did a uh, we did an interview with a guy a while back. He does uh, black metal out of uh, Brazil, and uh, he says all the time because he puts stuff straight to like digital and. He's like, yeah, I could never go back and and you know replay it live if I had to because I just I don't. It's just stuff that I do at the spur of the moment. I just yeah, put yeah. them right to track. He's very, and, he's very well, I mean, hard. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, I think we can. It's I mean, possible to guys, do it. These guys could relearn but it. It's, I mean, it's it's really. I'll tell, I'll tell you one thing. I I've uh, never I speed anything up or anything like that. I take sections of what they do and rearrange them. So I'm not making them play crazy stuff that they they can't play. Well, that's I mean, the with the with every the, every run they do is the run they're doing. With the Nagwal album, we had to sit here and and Matt's gone, but that was one of the weird parts about that is because I'd sit here in this in this living room and go over those songs to his electronic drums that he had written for it, yeah. and then, you know, the first time you're in a room with Matt and he's playing. I mean, I just stopped fucking playing halfway through the song, and I'm just watching him going, "Holy yeah. shit!" Because that's a fucking completely different ball game than yeah. than what he had put in there. And I mean, he's you know kind of adjusting and making things happen. I'm so it, it was beer. get me one too. Okay. Uh, it was <laughs> beer, beer, beer wench. beer wench. It also uh, from, from something from something Jeff was saying earlier yeah. about his the way he runs his face. You know, I I. It, it's it's weird because I got all these things on my uh, on my laptops and stuff like that. These flash drives he'd bring over with all that stuff. Sometimes not only would it be the raw versions of the songs as they were at that moment, but it would be a lot of the audio clips. You know the different stuff. I had little clips of Andrew singing that I I, I would just click on him because I didn't know what the fuck they were, and it would just be Andrew screaming, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? Oh, yeah. And then there would be clips of be clips of yeah. Jeff playing bass, and I'd just be sitting there giggling, li listening. To the stop. I'm going, man, this track. is fucking the little isolated tracks. I'm like, this oh, is fucking awesome. Isolated you know? wave files. Like, we're like, yeah, yeah, you're gonna need like one of those boards where you can like hit <laughs> it and add it in. So I'd, listen to, I'd listen to a track Jeff had played, and I'm just sitting there listening to it by itself, going, fuck, this is this could be 12 other songs if you yeah. wanted it to be, you know, what I mean? <laughs> depending on what somebody else was doing I, in that moment. They do know? give me a lot of stuff, and so uh, there's a lot of great stuff that doesn't even make the record that just you know there's a lot of stuff there's a lot of stuff that you play and then he's like ah oh, fuck i didn't hit record yeah <laughs> <laughs> that would be me if i had any talent at all that would are be you shitting me what really? is it what is it you would say because I, I would say something about oh shit i'm sorry i'm not even recording this interview just kidding yeah i'm like <laughs> can you guys all do everything again all the let's, start again let's start again but uh he, you know what's the thing that you would say to me because I, I would say well i gave you a bunch of shit and you'd be like, oh, yeah, I had to fucking, you know, I have to I have to weed out all your bullshit so oh, I can yeah. get to the good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, it, it takes yeah. some getting used to because if, in the beginning, I, I will tell you in the beginning stages of working with him many, many years ago, once he switched, when, when he used to play drums, mm -hmm. it was easy because it was, you know, it's just the generic yeah, I played, normal. I played drums in a band with, with him when I was. We played in a couple different so. things, but, uh, uh, but it was different. Then when it came to this, it started to become, you know, he'd be like, hey, give me this. Give me this, give me this kind of thing. 
And I, so then I would give it to him. And then you would hear your shit back and be like, that's not what I fucking gave you yeah. because he's chopped it up. And it takes a long time to get rid of that thing with your ego, which is like, dude, I spent fucking two days working on that rhythm you asked me to make. And then you realize he didn't really care about that whole thing. He no, cared about that one little section. He, I like he had that 20 seconds, man. Just that 20 so, seconds. Oh my it, was, yeah, it, was, it was really an interesting thing. And then, you know, now it doesn't, you know, now I'm, I'm used to it. So it's like you expect that to happen. So you don't have any, there's no ego involved in it. You're just yeah. like, take whatever you want. And because I trust what he's going to do with it anyways, because it always comes out sounding fucking great. Yeah, so it's like, shit, man, I don't, you know, I could always use it for something else if I ever I, do anything. I, I thought, I thought I was the only one. So that makes me feel good. <laughs> no, that's the fucking, that's everybody. the way everybody. that it is. Well, it's one a- of my, <laughs> uh, one of my favorite tracks on a new record is in at the beginning. And, uh, that was one of those tracks where I kind of feel like it, it sounds a little bit like Floyd sometimes, and then even sounds like yeah. one of my favorite artists and Devin Townsend, who I I love oh, yeah. adore. Another one, so. Devin Townsend. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Devin's over you here. Can, I entertain this entire catalog. You can you can uh, you can it's hear great. you can hear a little Devin Townsend in the uh, song uh, "End of the Beginning." Yeah, that's what he was just. Yeah. Just oh said. yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I got a little there. clip of that right now. Oh, in the play. Play. We're in the delay. We're in the no, same room. Out going across this I, can, way. I can tell you, though, I'm, I'm, set, with, I'm a hologram. <laughs> That's a different time. <laughs> He's, He's like 15 AI. minutes behind. Oh, yeah. yeah. Look at dinosaurs. Uh, here's a, here's a quick clip of my the beginning. Oh, yeah. There you go. That's a clip there from the new record. That's how we listen yeah. to all of the stuff. Yeah. Well, when, that little, song little kicks in, like when that song Not kicks me. into the metal part. Yeah, when you get to the metal uh, part of that. Like, I can tell you right now, when when Andrew and I re- uh, recorded it, he was definitely channeling Devin Town. I was like, I mean, we were I like, was like, like that. We're, we were like really that, keep going. going. You know, I mean, it takes a lot yes. out of you. Little did anyone know right now, Parker just said, I'm going to take that little clip. I'm going to redo it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. You got to steal from the back. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, like, it's just yeah. like that, though. Yeah. So, yeah, huge Devin Townsend fan. So is Andrew. And yeah, we were definitely going for that energy in that yeah. in that heavy section. Of that song. little tiny part. Of yeah. In, in that part, thousands of hours of music that's been yeah. sort of. In the part you collected. just played, he was going for more of a, I guess, Pink Floyd ish kind of. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I think uh, Andrew's voice is really unique. Honestly, he said he has tones of other singers but yeah. i think his voice is really uh on its own it, it has its own flavor yeah you know? it, it's got its, it's own sound yeah, that's what like, that's one of the things that you guys you, you guys have brought up different bands that things sound like but nothing ever sounds exactly like another band oh, yeah. it, it like influence. it's influence. right you can hear the influence but you're all but it, it, it never is like oh that sounds just like that you know no, right, right 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 mm-hmm. i'm not yeah. trying to Right, yeah, I, I don't which is which. You know, I, I will but. tell you now. He's very. That's the. He's very. He goes yeah. into that. Not you know. Not wanting it I to sound exactly like that. Yeah, I don't want it to sound derivative or uh, you know uh, predictable. It, you know, it's, I'm, there, I'm it's to, there's an homage. Yeah, but we have a lot of influences, mm-hmm. and we let him show. That's yeah. true. Yeah, because yeah. I would say that like you guys are very unique. Um, even though like aesthetically, I see a little bit of the cynic and maybe some of the uh, vocal effects, but then there's like yeah. a lot of this other stuff going on that's just so many different parts. And uh, oh, yeah. it's your it's your own creation, your own sound, and it's just freaking amazing on so many levels. Wow. Thank you. Well, yeah. It, man. We and put a lot of effort in the composition. Like yeah. that was one thing that really kind of I appreciated. I was just like. Everything seems very purposeful. Like the songs yeah. are made to be in a specific order, and I'm like trying. I'm, I I get real like in my head, so I'm like, oh, I'm wondering if this means something. I'm like googling the <laughs> name. Oh uh, no, no. Everything she was like, probably doing that. She was breaking it all down. Like, oh, I know what this means. <laughs> yeah, everything means something. Yeah, you know what's funny? A lot of, uh, a lot of uh, you were- you actually said something during that that uh, when y'all were doing that review of the album. That was another part that that kind of uh, made us laugh because you were talking about the lengths of the songs and how you liked that they were sh- kind of shorter like that. 
and not long like normal progressive songs are where they're 13, 14 minutes long. And it's funny because, you know, during all of these, every everything that we've ever worked on, I'm always pushing to try to get a fucking a song off of Animals. You know, I want fucking a 15 minute long fucking epic <laughs> song. And he is constantly going, fuck no, dude, we're not doing that. Yeah. Nope. And, and so to hear somebody justify that, I was like, you're going to be happy when you hear what she says. And, you know, and, and of course, it is, I was like, dude, that's one of those cases where you were absolutely right. Because, you know, just I, I love long songs. I always have. But well, I mean, especially in today's climate, you're probably less likely to get away with a really long song. Because, again, there's so much content. I don't have fucking time to listen to a 15 minute song is probably what a lot of people are saying, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah. No, that's that wasn't even my point. Like the time. No, I know, I know. But a lot of progressive songs. Yeah. They stop being the first half and start being the second half, and I'm like, it's how is this the same? I look at him all the time. I'm like, is this the same song? Are we listening to the same song? It doesn't even sound like the same song. But you're you like, should you should you should hear her rants when I start playing her some doom metal because then she's really like, oh god. <laughs> but I have to say. I am also a very big disco fan and Donna Summer more than like, she's my heart. And I was having just like one of my wine drunk nights and I'm upstairs putting on my albums and it's all Donna Summer. And I texted him and I said, I have to like eat my words because every song by Donna Summer is at least 15 minutes long, but then you have the extended disco version and it's 22 yeah. minutes long. And I have been bitching about progressive music being too long and I can't do that anymore because I will sit all night and listen to Donna Summer <laughs> sing about anything. And then he's like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm gonna write that down. Don't complain about my music anymore. <laughs> well, I love long songs, but I think, uh, People get will get tired of my musical ideas after a couple of minutes, so I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at, at four minutes. And then well, I, I think it all has its its part. Like, I mean, when it comes to prog, it's not unusual for prog bands, rock or metal, to do long opuses. But like, I think what makes they so great is that you do a lot within the short time standard you have, but it, it's easy to easier to digest. So, like, if you're trying to reach out beyond the prog crowd. That's yeah. the way to do it because most of them aren't going to sit there for like 20 yeah. minutes per song to sit there and go, oh my God, is, is this over yet? Like, I mean, we know they're good. They can do about 50,000 things, but it's like, okay, let's, let's shorten that a little but bit. That was what was great about the album. Like each song had its own unique voice, but they mm -hmm. also related to each other in such a specific way. So granted, yes, you probably could have taken it and turned it into a large opus, but for me, I love that the songs themselves, they they literally had their clear beginning, middle, and clear purpose, but then the song adjacent to it also still had its clear begin, middle, and end, but still linked. They all felt like that they linked to each other, they flowed, they were working together to create an entire composition, if that, if that makes any sense. So yeah, I, no, that's what I was telling you earlier about the how you guys complimented that fact. And I, again, we did, that was not an accident. We went we over those effort over and over and rearranged the songs, every possible combination to, to kind of get it to that point where it sounded kind of cohesive and, and, and sort of yeah, in a way, right. I guess like a big long thing, but, but definitely separated, you know, uh, uh, because it's the, you know, basically you could have just taken out the, the beginning and ends of some tracks and made one of them 18 minutes long if you really wanted to, but right, yeah. it, it worked better like this. And again, that was where I was like, well, it looks like you were right. Because if you were <laughs> Jeff, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I had a question for Chris, actually. Oh. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, Chris, did, on this last album, did you have like an overarching kind of philosophical concept like that, that you were uh, portraying? Or no, was it just kind of. Not really. Yeah. No, not, not really. I mean, as far as the lyrical content or as far as yeah. the musical content? Or, yeah, just like the uh, philosophical, lyrical. You know. um, I mean, I had, we, we had, we were going after the uh, the same general ideas. Mm -hmm. um, but can, yeah, we're, 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 I can tell you, he, I mean, he helped write, write a lot of the lyrics. Yeah, so right. I, 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 can, I can answer that. So, so uh, that, that whole, that was during COVID. Yeah. So there was a, there's also a lot like of, the vocals there's there. a lot of real kind of um, very 
songs that are talking about loneliness and yep. being alone and then having to work on yourself uh, because you can you can then, you know, you back your, I mean, you can wait for somebody to try to pick you up or you can't. I mean, if yeah. you listen to that song, like that's what the uh, end of the beginning is about. Yeah. Um, and then like for me personally, uh, my my dad was uh, in um, ICU. He had a stroke in 2019. Oh, wow. Uh, away. But he was he was around and hanging on for a long time. And I was one of the ones that couldn't go see a parent that was dying. Yeah. So that, that was like a real, real you know, it, it was, you write about the things that yeah. you know at the moment. There's definitely emotions. Yeah, there's definitely there. emotions. Yeah. But the we, cool, we took, we took our time. The and... real cool thing about it is the very last song. The yeah. very last song in this album is happy as fuck. Yeah. Like if you listen to it, <laughs> I mean, you, yeah. I can hear the whole fucking thing in my head right now. It's like, if I want to be happy, <laughs> If you want to dance around the living yeah, room, kind of thing, like back in the day, like, or making yeah, forget Donna dance. Summer. No, I'm just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to this. That's why I'm really going with the Donna Summer thing. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh, you're talking about like, oh, yeah. she's not. She's not going to talk about Donna. I, Summer. I, I, I love disco yeah. as well. I mean, Bee Gees are great. I'm he yells at people. me all the time for like not bringing my wah pedal. Yeah. Oh yeah. Bring your wah pedal. Why? I, I had to buy one on the way here one time. See, we've already figured out what your next cover track is. Disco Duck. We know. Yeah. Disco yeah. Duck. Wow. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Jeff. Doing that and doing like whammy bar dive bombs. Like he was always into like, uh, bring, bring, the, bring the whammy bar. Like weird. bring your whammy bar. He's like, use the wham. So, uh, <laughs> it is fucking yeah, hilarious he right. how he asked That's for things like that. Exactly Man, make right. that sound. Make so that noise. Make that sound. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I, I've never had a music class in my life. He's all not, these guys, he's not lying. well, he's Jeff and do the harmonic sound. Do the harmonic sound. They, they, they all know actual music. I just play everything by ear, and uh, and that's because sometimes he'll describe it in a way where you're like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" And then you figure okay, it out. You're like, oh, that's what you want. You get yeah. it at first. You get it at first, and then you take a hit of nitrous, and then you really get it. <laughs> don't let me lie. A lot of my tracks were recorded with a balloon taking a hit of nitrous in my mouth. I went for just smoking crack. And so. I, went, I went, went the full ween route. You know, I'm going, give it all to me right now. I want to put, I put everything. We do love in my ween body. as well. Yeah. This is the part where you edit in that live of, from. Oh, that's they edited. <laughs> the live from <laughs> Bob Bob where David Gilmore says people think we're a drug band, yeah. but we're really not. We're really not. <laughs> you can talk. Well, what I do like about your records is, and I, I, I wish I, maybe you can tell me if it's ever going to happen. Is I would like to see. CDs either on like vinyl or cassette. So even if you guys don't end up releasing them, can you just do it for me? Just <laughs> sure. I actually sure, no, just no make worries. them a mixtape. So it'll, it'll, it'll cost you a mere twelve hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, I, I'm sure it costs a lot too. Especially, I, I don't know, man. But I think I think your type of records are great for vinyl. Yeah, yeah, like good, made for that. Yeah, right. A good heavyweight, a good heavy gram. Uh, yeah, vinyl. It's got to be good. The new album, some shitty. The new album we have on uh, CD right now, but we have not posted a way for anyone to buy it yet. So I have the. Yeah, nobody's I, gonna buy that shit. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but people buy albums. The, the, the problem with the album thing I'm is, is the that uh, had too many voodoos. I'm sorry. <laughs> the length of the album or the length of the music ends up being a problem because then you have to make a double for, album. Or have yeah. to cut out a song. No. Or cut yeah. Yeah. What is it, only 90 minutes? That would yeah. be a problem for Donna probably. Summers. Right. Too, so. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> We're basically just like Donna Summers is what I'm learning from this whole thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I did not get so much in common. Uh, not, David, all you have to do is sell a couple of your guitars, man. You got the money right there. You know, you sound, you're starting to sound like my wife. And I'm... A cassette is easy, Chris. Why don't you just why don't you just record it onto a cassette and send it yeah. to him? Yeah. The handwritten thing. Uh, you know, like, yeah. 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 There, there, there I still have cassettes from the band I was in uh, when I was 14, my thrash band. And uh, my girlfriend actually uh, was online looking it up, and she found that 
uh, what is it, Discogs, is selling the cassette for two hundred dollars. What? <laughs> yeah. oh I have like God. a little box in the back. But... You're yeah, playing drums in it? It's, it's awful. Yeah, yeah, it's awful. Yeah, yeah. 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 You don't want to so bubble. bubble. Yeah, but it's, it's like a collector button. button. That's why. Yeah. 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 Who's collecting I can tell it? This. I wouldn't. Well, I, wouldn't I mean, like Dave was talking about those CDs that had all your earlier versions of the songs. Like people be like, "I'll buy that." Yeah, give me that. Dude, I have yeah. from a lot of people. I know nowadays, um, most people are like, we're we're not keeping stuff. We're going to streaming. We're yeah. just doing everything on Spotify or whatever. We want stuff. You know, upstairs in the living room is all the vinyl and the cassettes. Down here is all the CDs. Like, we want stuff. Well, I know so we, not we, everybody we, is we, doing we, that, we, but we want. Yeah. Stuff. <laughs> well, I'll send you some CDs and some shirts. We got those right now. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I want a you. shirt. Where's my <laughs> shirt, Chris? <laughs> oh, a shirt. shirt. The band yeah. member doesn't even yeah. have one. What the fuck? What are you talking about? I've got y'all baby. I'm giving y'all shirts. Thankless. Oh, Thank yeah, I am. Thankless. He's a goddamn I, slave driver, number one. <laughs> play it this way. Play it. Well, but listen. Getting, hey, actually, there's a there's a real thing there with I'm that. We were talking about. I'm getting. I'm, I'm getting. I'm, I'm getting yeah. salty. I'm we getting we just salty. talked about this earlier. The Acid, word, the the the, the name being they, was different. Five when, years ago. When we came, when we came up. Yeah, a lot of people right. might find it controversial to walk around with a shirt that just says they on it now. Because they don't I mean, they don't understand it's it, it, it was I mean now it's it's a completely different I polarizing mean, political statement. Oh, oh, so now it is, who is five years ago, is the, five yeah. years ago was they being let you me, know let the, me clarify the, one thing. You know, what yeah when we came up with the name they and we were thinking of more uh, along the lines of the conspiratorial, you know, the ominous uh, thing. The ominous Why thing, they? you know. They are gonna uh, they're, uh, put a microchip in your brain. What's a you know that sort of thing? I wanted to put uh, yeah, I wanted to put quotations marks around it at all times. But, but if you do that, that now you say that you're like it. being rude. Yeah, exactly. or or making or maybe mocking it or maybe not mocking it. You're yeah. gonna be divisive no matter what. But not only that, you know. we didn't realize it would be it would made us impossible to search. No one can find exactly. us. Exactly. Oh, yeah. We can't heard anything. <laughs> No one can find this band. What's because the, the name is impossible no. to search for. So yeah, even now, a, even yeah. now, like if you go yeah. and just type we in try. the band, like it's very oh, yeah. tough. Like you have Absolutely. to like literally put band camp just to find the first record. <laughs> yeah, which so is changing the project name to Who Is They for this last album. Um, but even that's still uh, very difficult. To search <laughs> right. for. You know, I'm going to say this in front so, of everybody for the first time because they've never heard me say this because we haven't been in the same space like this uh -oh. i've tried to tell him over and over to just fuck all these names you know he keeps coming up with and you know you're not you you're gonna have a failure here and there especially like that one ended up being b because of different reasons not because of what it meant at the time but uh just fucking everything is the chris parker project i'm not gonna he yeah, won't do it all your work all you guys's work i'm just gonna put under my name have dude it's your fucking thing at the end that's, of the that's day. my whole life that's my whole career chris <laughs> <laughs> exactly you know, the most hilarious core would be they, and there's yeah. this band called Them. They're like almost like a King Diamond sort of tribute band. Uh, yeah. even though they have their own material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How funny would that be? <laughs> there's a rap band called They. They yeah. with the period. Don't get them started. Yeah. Don't get them started. Don't get Jeff started. You need Jeff's quiet. Jeff's not, look at me pointing at the camera. Look, you're not quiet. Well, what about do the whole thing? Change Definitely. your name to like a symbol or something. Yeah, we did something like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I I like the logo. I, I mean, the uh, I had the the logo came out really cool. So I, I didn't I didn't really want to change the project name, and I wanted it to the new album to be associated with the first album. So right. so we kind of tried to make a compromise and do hmm. the who would say, but it didn't really really help with the searchability. It's still I, I, very difficult to search. The uh, next one will be called Why Are They? Then the yeah. next one will be, you <laughs> I, know. I have a you know what? That would be very original. That would actually <laughs> I heard that. I was like, we keep changing it every time. Yeah, then. We were, I have very, have, I have very low expectations. So. <laughs> I'm, the last, I'm the last record is going to be Who This? Yeah. <laughs> who that? Who this? Who that? Who that? <laughs> Who they? Uh, we talked about song, who they? a little bit um, <laughs> with, with the age of technology, you know, of course, over the last 20 or 25 years, Napster starting a lot of stuff. Now you have Spotify and all that. Yeah. Spotify In your opinion, as musicians, do you think that 
streaming has helped you more or is more of a hindrance to musicians? It could go both ways because yeah. there's a there's again like we were talking about earlier there's an overload of content now so it makes it you know it, you really don't you know in the old days you would go to the CD store get a CD bring it home listen to the whole thing because that's what you bought and that's what you you know it's like shit this better be good and then you'd go through the whole thing and you know live or die with it you know and now shit I mean you could sit there and switch from one thing to the next yeah. you know because you got YouTube you got whatever you're using to listen or watch and so it's kind of a double-edged sword i mean it's great because it's even the playing field anybody can make music so all these talented people now have a have a platform but right. I love all there's so much content that I love all the you can't get to all stuff i want to i want to defer to jeff actually yeah let's this. hear what jeff has to jeff say. makes his money like this mm -hmm. i i would say so you said does it help and to me there's two different kinds of helping right so like uh, so I have a, an example is I have another uh, like for fun project, like a love project that I did. It was like a black metal band called Agrat. Yeah. Fucking I, pick that love shit. It. Pivot. That's the best goddamn album that's ever. My, that's on my phone. That's on my phone playlist that I listen to all I am upset I couldn't be a part of it's that. It's a great album. It's a great album. <laughs> really but, really check um, it out. but streaming wise, like it streams a lot. So it, I think it reaches more people. For streaming so visibility yes it does help me financially definitely does not it does not help me because streaming yeah, like, it's, all me. it's all me listening it's it's, it's me. <laughs> it doesn't pay you anything I'm trying to get the numbers up but do you think jeff uh if we went back to say you know the 80s or 90s and if you were still in this project then do you think you think a label would push you as hard like because you know you did say that you were able to get some views and everything on your music but i just one thing i've always looked at is like when i was growing up i always went to get like metal magazines like metal maniacs or pit or whatever but that can only tell you so much you can never really listen to anything or you could kind of usually went with like familiar names so if you had the cannibal corpses or whatever that's right. where you're going to gravitate towards so, but if you have a project you're doing that's kind of like on the underground you had to really rely on someone just taking a chance and like that's even more yeah. rare or than... selling your your cds and tapes out of their trunk like that's that's kind of well, i just mean as far as exposure because labels like they were very selective on who they were push you know and that was sort of the issue with some of these bands is that they would push like 10 bands that everybody knew but they wouldn't pay much attention to them so i'm just wondering right from an artist perspective if like do you think it actually is better now than it would have been? I think that's also kind of a double-edged sword too, because I think now so many people uh, can, like anyone can make an album. You don't have to have a bunch of money. You don't have to have a label. Anyone can do it and, and put it out online. But how many of those groups play live or are real bands? You know, because right. back, if you're talking about back in the 80s and 90s, if you had a project that you were recording with, you pretty much had to be, have an actual band that played. Mm -hmm. Like it was pretty rare to have just people put stuff together and just record one album and then never do anything with it. Like if you wanted to, if you really believed in it and you wanted to push your project, you had to get out there and play a whole bunch, which uh, I kind of miss that, honestly. Like now, you know, people don't do that very, uh, really. I mean, a lot of times people don't do that. They just put out these projects because you can record with like one guy in China, one guy in the US, one guy, you know, you can record these albums where in no way can you have a band because you're like in different countries, you know? Right. So, uh, but that happens all the time, you know? So I think, uh, I think that's kind of a double-edged sword. Like I think back then to promote, if people wanted to promote their band, they had to take cheap gigs, they had to take opening slots, yeah, they had to take all sorts of stuff. They had to tour a, around for no money, you know? Yeah. And now people are spoiled. They don't, we don't do that anymore. So it's right. like, uh, you, you, had to, you, had to, you had to have a fanzine. You had to, you had to send away for tapes and do tape exchanges. Yep. Like it was yeah, serious yeah. business, man. Like we had a four track. We're all like, old men. Like four, four tracks. Yeah. God damn, I forgot about like, four tracks. I'm, I'm yeah. almost 50 years old. I'll be 50 years yeah. old in July. Yeah. So uh, and, we played dad rock. We played yeah. dad rock. The, we played psych is. psychedelic <laughs> dad rock. You'll yeah. be 50 in July? Yeah. yeah. I'm, you, I'm, 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 actually, I'm actually 53, so I feel you. No, oh, I'm yeah. 51, man. Okay, I'm not you're, the chaperone. Yes, yeah, I'm, yeah, so I'm having another beer. Am uh, I the young guy in this group? Wait, Chris, <laughs> you're young. Man. I'm, I'm 48. I'm the young guy. I'm 48, too. 
I'm so, okay. We're, the, we're both the young we're, we're, We'll be the babies. <laughs> you I know Matt's like 78 or something. So. I, know, I, know you're, <laughs> exactly. I, know, I know what you're talking about. But what, what I wanted to say about the label situation, it seems to me that uh, most Ooh, metal know. labels, uh, they're only interested if you have a touring act ready to go because that's where they make their money. Yeah, they don't make true. their money off of albums. And so you could write a really badass album and send it out to them and they don't really care unless right. you're ready you're ready to go on tour and start you know start making that, that money that, that way. goes back to the stealing we can't we can't do, we can't do this less yeah. the touring act back then. and we can't do that everybody in this band well, has families a, and yeah. you know we all have a real job they give so. you a loan they give and they give you a twelve thousand dollar loan and you yeah. gotta pay eighteen thousand yeah. dollars we got friends not on. just metal i'm oh, great, great, great. Great. about like um what do you call it the voice so yeah. you know, you win the voice, and you think, "Oh, I've I've won this this yeah. great thing," but they no, they won't even let you on the voice unless yeah, you already you. have a following. Then oh, if you yeah. have a following, they'll let you on, and right. then they give you the shittiest contract, and NBC owns you. Yeah, so yeah. you have That's the tour yeah. for two years for NBC, but you just got all this exposure to yourself, and you're owing it back to a company, and it's all yeah. you. It's yeah, a business. Nothing, nothing, it's nothing all business is as it seems. Nothing and it's is as sad. It seems. You know, it's it's everybody. And and There's I that. think to back to like what Jeff said, like it is a double edged sword. We we now have YouTube, we have these reality television shows, we have the ability and the technology to do amazing things, but big business still will hold you down, they will use it against you, and because yeah. You know they have the money and they're controlling the purse they, strings. They, 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 that's the they we're talking about. The they, 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 and it's so sad it's, because you, you guys are them. a great I'm, talent, I'm, I'm, and you see all these other you know people who go out there and they're obviously talented. But what happens, you know, just because they got discovered or whatever. I'm, it they never, it doesn't go it. to fruition. And, and I've well, read so many sad stories about these people who think they're, they've made it. I went on American Idol, I went on The Voice, or I, I did the big mainstream thing and they're still back where they started. It doesn't happen, these big uh, like discoveries like it used to. So I will, I will tell you this, there's, 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 a, there's a thing that I've noticed in the comedian world. And uh, uh, Louis C.K. was probably the first person that I saw that did this. Pull he, his dick out? <laughs> not that part. But uh, uh, but this was fucking genius because yeah. while well, well, everybody else is fighting for their spot on Netflix or or whoever's going to you know stream their their right. comedy special, he fucking made his own website yeah, he and he started he selling famous. all the shit. Now he sells his fucking movies. But he was already famous. It wasn't like he started off doing that. But he he transitioned to that. Yeah. Because he saw that they were taking most of his money away from him. And he's right. like, you know what? I can fund my own stuff. I can create it. I can be in charge of it. I don't have to have notes. I don't have to listen to people. I can make what I want to make. And then I'll make, I'll, yeah. I'll either lose or I'll win. With, I'll gamble on myself. And he's done that. And it's fucking still paying off to, to this wow. day. And you can't. I can tell you, you know, I'm not making Louis C.K. money. I'm right. Well, I'm, I mean, no, obviously. Step one, get famous and rich. Step there two. Transition <laughs> counts. Exactly. Right. Well, yeah. If only I could do that. Step but, but what he's done is he's shown that there's a different platform right. for these other guys to use. That's yeah. right. Yep. Well, what? How is it the best way for people to find they? Gas stations. Yeah. And, uh, uh, rest stops. <laughs> you know. Your local uh, bathrooms. Yeah. Rehab centers. Or, I don't know. Ask your local hobo. <laughs> Uh, yeah, your guess is as, good as, is as good as mine. Uh, try to type in. You can go to Spotify. Uh, what I found, you can find it if you type in the, the specific names, like uh, the name of the song, name of the album. Uh, Which you requires can, you, you to know how to find yeah. the band. Well, I know on your Facebook, it's They Are a Band, so that that's that made it easier. Yeah. That. Yeah. Which, which Facebook? There may yeah. be three. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know are, are you, are you on Bandcamp, Chris? Uh, the first album is on Bandcamp. We have okay. not released this. The second one on Bandcamp yet, but we're about to. So, I like, if actually, you type they on Bandcamp, does it come up pretty easily? It, it, it does if you type in, like, they ban on right. Bandcamp, usually so it will pop up. But if you just okay. did they, with even if you typed in they unspeakable, it does not come up on that. Oh, like, wow. It's okay. wild. 
Yeah, we, we should have just made it uh, made the name. No, I love search the perfect. It's unsearchable. It's unsearchable. It is unsearchable. That's gonna be. We don't want you to have our music. Fuck you all. Exactly. exactly. It's so good. No, we can listen to it. It's people, like fucking villain. If people only knew, it would be you know move over Beyonce. But, <laughs> but you know, it's gonna be one of those things where I, I I I we talked about this early on that I think people will discover it as time goes by. And they're gonna hear it and go, "What yeah. the fuck is this?" I'm and super this proud crazy, of it. You know? I'm super proud of it. Well, I mean, these I'm guys gonna make sure they know the work. And, yeah, <laughs> I'm excited. Well, I to wish the uh, Illuminati house yeah. band. <laughs> exactly. I'm going and I'm not. But I'm. I don't. You know. I'm. I'm okay with money, so I'm not really in this for money. I just want people. He's to got that million it. dollars he yeah, told exactly. you about. So, you know. <laughs> but no, I mean. I, I'm not. I'm not homeless. So I mean, I, I'm okay. Uh, I just want people to hear it. I put a lot of effort into it. You know, a lot of time. I'd like to get people to hear it, but it's yet. Yeah, uh, the the name was a, a fiasco. Change. I kind of yeah. I kind of kind of biffed it with that the, with the project name. All that effort and time put <laughs> so, into the album, and then to shit the bed when it came to the name exactly, was a uh, it was exactly. a weird thing. I mean, know? we didn't we didn't think about the searchability issues. We didn't, we didn't think name. about all the things. So. I love the name. Um, it's a good name. Things, I, I think it's a yeah. terrible so, idea. So there is, there is, there is, well, there you is. know what? Here's the thing. That's why we do what we do because I bet, we, I bet we will give like people a way to like discover well, you, you and check you, you out. Go, and if you go on Spotify, if you go on yeah, Spotify, we're in Spotify. We're on Apple Spotify Music. Or type, in, type in "Who Is They?" Yeah, and click on the thing that looks like our album cover, <laughs> or or type in so "They Unspeakable" and well, it will bring up that other album. We will put some links underneath this interview so people can click it. I will share it with lots of people. We will share it. That this is kind of like what we do. We literally we go to concerts. We definitely need promotion. We meet fans, and we just want to put the good music out there to everyone. We obviously can't do it for ourselves. Can I make a suggestion to you guys? Sure. Sure. And you'll have to find him. I'm I'm Facebook friends with the guy, but I've never had a conversation with him. Uh, a guy, he does this. Uh, he's I guess there's only one album out there. It's called the Absalom Theory. That's the name of the band. And Hans Grossman is the he got him to play drums for his project. A guy out of New York, and it's it's kind of like a Parker thing in a way. It's one guy, and he got Hans Grossman to play the drums for him. Cool. And the album is called Altam Altamuga. I'm not sure. I can't pronounce it. You're promoting so, some other band. Yes, I'm, 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 <laughs> yeah, I, I hope they can get a hold of him and maybe do do this one of these things with him because it's without giving. Yeah, we are. Great. It's one of the fucking. It's one of the greatest that. albums that I've ever heard in my life. And I, I can't sit through Grossman whole is, albums most of the time these days, but the whole fucking album is just and nobody. It's kind of I, I look at him the same way that this project is. I'm like nobody seems to know who the fuck this is. Yeah. And it's such an amazing album. I don't understand why. I'm like, why the fuck is this not? Because we don't have good, don't, they don't have know? good people spreading good news. Yeah. Well, he maybe he came up with a weird name. I don't know if the Absalom theory was a good name or not. You have to ask him. That, but, you know. Well, I'll definitely, uh, I'll definitely check it out. But I want to say thank you, you guys, for taking the time out for us today. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually yeah. really, really excited to meet you all because I've been a big fan of Unspeakable for a while now, and uh, oh, obviously you, their man. new record is just as good. And so. I'll be talking that up as well, but uh, yeah, many thanks for you guys finding the time to, to talk with us a little bit about this. Final thought. Awesome, no problem. We had a great yeah, time, man. Exactly. Yeah, man. Uh, friend, you, friend you me know, on guys. Facebook. Friend me on Facebook, yeah. and we'll talk about the Broncos all next season. Well, Don't yeah, I'm gonna, I tried looking it up, but there's like 50,000 Christopher Jackson, so I'm gonna, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I need some help there. All right, we got we got searchability issues everywhere, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll, find you. I'll find you, and then I'll send you a friend yeah, request. You know, yeah, we yeah. Uh, you but, me first. Yeah, you can. Yeah, because you've been talking with her, so hit her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, stick around for the people watching us. Thank you for tuning in, checking us out. Help these guys out. Go check out their music. Share the links. Uh, they're very good. I, I promise you, I'm not steering you wrong here. Uh, but for we you guys, hang around for a minute. Music. We're getting ready to head out of here. So just hang on just a minute, guys. All right. Thank you. Keep my kids alive, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't watching.